Okay. The 784th meeting of the City of Laurel Historic District will come to order. If you wish to be heard at this meeting and are not an applicant, please sign the speaker list provided on the table in front of the room. The qualifications of the members of the commission, the staff to the commission, and any consultants used are on file with the city and are hereby made a part of each and every application heard today. The guidelines and procedures adopted by the commission are also made a part of each and every application. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits and is not to be considered as establishing a precedent for any other application. Madam Secretary, will you call the roll? Chairwoman Blitz? Here. Mr. Hayes? Here. Councilman Lez? Here. Mr. McSini? Mr. Cocoon? Here. Mr. DiLorenzo? Here. Mr. Dyer? Here. And we do have a quorum. Thank you. The first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the April 7th, 2015 meeting. Are there any comments or corrections to the minutes? Entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes uh, of the meeting from April 7th. I have a second. Second. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes for the meeting of April the 7th, made by Mr. DeLorenzo, seconded by Mr. Hayes. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. DeLorenzo? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Councilman Lowe's? Yes. Mr. Bacoon? Abstain. Mr. Dyer? Abstain. And, we, and the motion carries. Okay, thank you. Agenda item three is HDC 0452015 for 915 Montgomery Street. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes, hello. Uh, I want to change from red to green in front of the house. I want to change from the uh, existing steel railings to a wooden railing. We'll pick up the list. Last work from the bottom of the porch up to the top. Uh, you can see that in the photographs. Mm -hmm. I also provided uh, drawings to show where I'm putting things and then a drawing of how I'm going to construct the uh, railing itself. Okay. So, um, where did you come up with the idea of, of imitating the lattice skirts for the railing? Is that, is that something you've seen before, or is it just for, for expediency? Because I think it's great that you're replacing the wrought iron or steel or whatever's there, but uh, normal banisters and balusters would be more appropriate, in, especially in the historic district, because that's usually what's there for this type of house. I don't think this would have been an original uh, look for the house, especially the double lattice look. No, it's not average. Yeah. But uh, to be honest with you, prior to having the steel railings there, we had a, the, like the white pickets with the top, you know, the balusters. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they do not last well in that sunshine. The uh, paint is constantly uh, wearing off of them. This is cleaner, easier to paint. relatively simple in construction. I haven't found that to be true of lattice with what I have under my decks. It's <clears throat> falling apart and I have a difficult time maintaining it, even staining it every year. Well, you can see the picture. Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not having a problem with that lattice. Mm -hmm. And that lattice, and it is lattice right? that was originally in the house when mm -hmm. it was built by my grandfather's. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, the lattice, you're going to construct it with wood. Yes. And you're going to paint it with wood. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm confused about what the difference would be between a banister and baluster wood painted with this lattice wood painted. So what we have here are flat surfaces. You get into the others, you have a, a, a curve. Okay. You have different, uh, different thicknesses. And when that paint goes bad and you have to scrape it off of there, it's hard to get it off of there. It never looks the same again. Well, I know that banisters um, usually come with sort of a curved shape, the actual banister. So the water would, so if it was properly painted, the water would roll off of it. You wouldn't have, shouldn't have any 
you know, ex, ex, extra wear there. But but the, and the same with the banisters. I I, I got to tell you, I've um, stripped uh, my banisters and balusters in the historic district, and actually in the house that I owned in Riverdale before moving here. And uh, yeah, it's it's tough work, but but if you do it right and lay down the proper foundation, um, the paint will last for five, six, seven years even if you, again, make sure you put the right paint on uh, for this particular um, purpose. Uh, I, just, I just can't see that a lattice work with, you know, that much surface uh, and wood being last, lasting any longer than, than a banister and baluster would. At least that's not been my experience. And uh, I'm sorry, my experience is good. Hmm. I have another question. Yeah, you have the um, supports that are the wrought iron. Uh, what, are you, what are you going to do with them? At the center of the... Okay, those are not structural. They're not structural? No. So there won't be anything there. It would no. just be an expanse of lattice. Just, just seems like a lot of lattice. And are you looking for privacy on the porch? Because that's going to make your porch darker and less visible. Madam Chair, I think that's exactly what the lattice is for. This is a, you know, a lot of traffic on the street. Got all the pass-through traffic on the West Laurel. Um, I know that uh, this this porch is sat on, mm -hmm. so I I mean I can appreciate uh, uh, the lattice because I mean our house had lattice on the back porch when we moved in mm -hmm. uh, that was put in in 1910. Now we took it out because we we opted to open up the porch, and uh, so again I I you know I don't. In this house, in this case, I'm not so sure that the lattice isn't a, uh, you know, a good compromise in providing some privacy. Um, uh, but again, that's just my thought. I mean, I like the green. Mm -hmm. You're going to use the green gables? Yeah. Paint the one on the end, John? The green gables, because yeah. that was Jan's favorite. Book. Yeah. So again, I, I think in this case, uh, we might want to just think about the privacy on the porch because it's used. And uh, I think that's, I mean, it's not like the lattice that they're going to put, that he's going to put above is overwhelming. It's the same size, essentially, as the, as the one below. So again, that's just my thought. I just have never seen that before, so it's a little hard for me without having the dimension on the drawings or anything, yeah. how it's really aesthetic or kind of look. Well, I, when you look at the drawing, I look at the picture, I think it's just a century of places, the metal. And again, like I say, our house had it on the back porch. But that was a long time ago. And it was 1910 they had put it in. I don't think anybody had ever yeah, painted it. Was, it. The house we're talking about was built in 28. Right. Yeah, so again, yeah. now, I don't think it, pro it probably did not have metal on it when it started. No, he it, said it, it was wood first. I don't know what it had, but again. It, it had a wooden railing with yeah. one by ones. Okay. And yeah, I, 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 certainly, they, I certainly agree with Were they square or were they turned? Pardon me? Were they square or were they square. turned? Oh, they, yeah. okay. And they did not last well out there. And I know... I can't swear my grandfather replaced any of them, but I know my father did, and I know I did. Mm -hmm. And then about the end of the 60s, uh, we had to take up the porch deck. You couldn't buy lumber the same size, and you couldn't buy fur anymore. We put down the uh, plywood, which is rated for piers and docks, and that's when we put up the metal. And that was right before the historic district got started. So it's been that railing out there, and that's now shot. I, I personally agree with the uh, removal of the metal railing, but I do think that the uh, you know a, a, a 
banister type of would, would be much more appropriate. I think the contrast, if nothing else, would be more appropriate for. I just don't see the doubling up of the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, of the lattice work. It just uh, doesn't seem to me to be I mean, very just, I, I've just historically seen accurate that. or appealing. Because of the way it also has to be framed, framed in, you know, then you have the, the large width of and there's solid wood in between it, too. Robbie, you have any? Have you considered any other <coughs> designs or proposals? I've looked at putting uh, regular railings up, mm -hmm. and you can do that. It takes more time, more effort, more expensive. I'm going to do that. I might as well do them in vinyl. So I understand it's not a suggested use within the historic district. It's hard to find stuff that's not vinyl or for decks, you mm -hmm. know, which is the uh, treated lumber, mm -hmm. which is not going to look right out there either. Now, you can put treated lumber out there and let it season for about a year and try mm -hmm. painting it. I don't know how you all feel about leaving it out there for a year. I had a uh, relative that had a porch similar to this with the uh, with the brick pylons, and what they did is they put wood panels up between them, so the, you know it was raised off the ground, but it was a solid wood, and then um, they trimmed it out, and it had a railing on the top. I think they used mahogany, but uh, the wood was just like a um, marine grade or marine plywood. plywood. Yeah. And then they painted it to yeah. match the house. So it gave them privacy on the porch. And it also broke up where you didn't have the lattice, you know, going all the way up. It sort of broke the front of the porch. Does, up does that sound better to the committee? To me, I'd rather have that than, than have the... Well, you're, talking about a, you're talking about a salt like Bob Martin's got on his house. Right, house. exactly. Or, I mean, when you say we discourage vinyl, the shiny, inexpensive vinyl things generally don't get approved, but they have come out with matte finishes and some very nice quality. It's not really vinyl, it's a composite. Correct. Um, that's, that's that is maintenance-free yeah. once it's put up, except for some... Okay, but I mean, I went to Lowe's, I went to Home Depot. Mm -hmm. I looked at what they had. Right. And what they had was the shiny vinyl, mm -hmm. or they had the, this is for your deck, and... Uh, you know, treated lumber. Mm -hmm. I can put marine plywood out there and paint it white. And put a banister on the top. Sure. I mean, if you want, I'll even paint the banister green. I mean, I'm, I'm easy here, but I have to do something. Right, right. I understand. I appreciate your flexibility. Would, would the applicant too. need to come back before us with a design of what he was going to propose? Well, again, I think <clears throat> we're talking about, John, what's being suggested is uh, essentially what you have here with your lattice just replacing that with marine plywood. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, with the space, you've got the space above the deck to the lower, to the yeah. lower rail. Three or four inches space, yeah. or yeah, you have to have space underneath there because you don't want it to you, rot. You weren't able to sweep, right? You weren't right. able to push the snow off of it, right? Like you say, you put it down there flat, yeah, and it's rot. yeah. Now, what I'll probably put down there is there'll probably be a couple of kickers, mm -hmm. yeah, the center to hold it up, right? Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, I'm, I think that would look good too. Like you said, you paint the upper rail green to match the right. uh, sure. match the gable end, everything else is white. Okay. I mean, let, let me make sure you're, you're not suggesting replacing the lattice with marine plywood yes, lattice. Yes. No. No. Not not lattice. Lattice. Okay. All right. No, no, that's, that's just all that. Make sure. Bob. What Bob, what make sure. what right. Bob Martin did with his is got solid okay. panels there. It gives him a bit of privacy. Okay, so the lattice will be replaced. That's fine. Now, are those framed or are they just the panels? 
They want to have, I think they, like if you frame. look around, no, the ones no. they framed them. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them are framed. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, Gives it a finished look. I, I can do that. Okay. Just a suggestion. I think it would be more aesthetically pleasing. Do you want me to come back? I think I need to come back. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, HDC 45215, change existing red paint to the green as presented by the applicant. Replace steel railing with a wood framed solid wood uh, to replace uh, the existing uh, um, the existing uh, railing. A couple of kickers on. It's going to need some kickers on the bottom to keep it from sagging, and that the top railing it'll be framed in the top railing. It'll be painted the same color green as the as the eaves, as the uh, uh, the other green paint. I would second that. Appreciate it. Thank you. I think we have to vote. <laughs> Madam Secretary, we have a motion to approve HDC 0452015 as stated by Councilman Les, seconded by Mr. Clicloon. Would you call the roll, please? Councilman Les? Yes. Mr. Clicloon? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. DiLorenzo? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. And the motion carries. I see. Yes, too. <laughs> you missed me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Chairwoman Blitz. I had too many <laughs> notes around your name. I didn't see it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you so much. Thank you for being flexible. I appreciate your coming in. Good luck. Agenda item four is HDC 0472015 for 105 Main Street. Is there someone here for that? Hello. Do you state your name for a record, please? Vanessa Smith. Vanessa Smith. Okay. And you want to tell us about your sign? It's a basic um, sign. It's going to be on four by four posts. It's just going to have basically the business shirtless um, salon and base art. And underneath it, it has our logo, which says experience it, and then just the phone number. The size is the 30 by 40. And it's single sided as well. We won't have anything on the other side. Okay. Questions or comments? Okay. Anybody? Questions for you? Okay. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, move that we approve HDC 047 2015 as stated. Yes. I'll second that. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 0472015, made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Mr. DeLorenzo. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. DeLorenzo? Yes. Councilman Les? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank a you. nice sign. Thank you Good very much. Good luck to you. Agenda item five is HDC 049-2015 for 358 Main Street. Hello. Hello, Mr. Okay. I'm here to request the approval for our new sign for More Than Java. It's in uh, green brown with the logo on the side and it reads More Than Java Cat. And so this is this is the, the sign? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't have any borders around or anything? Uh, we actually, uh, there are little, little borders. Right, okay. So th so that'll just go in in place of the other one then? Yes. It's, okay. I like the coffee cup. <laughs> Similar to the one that logo that I used to have. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I still have it. <laughs> Any questions, comments? First of all, welcome. Oh, We're really glad to have you on, the, yeah, on Main Street. Um, 
So you have two different colored signs, uh, one above and one below. On that sign there? Yes. That's, uh, no, that's just the existing sign that was there before. We just oh, took it down and using that sign. This is a coming soon. You have coming soon on the window, right? Yes. That re that gets removed. Is that yes. correct? Yeah, when they put the big sign up. Is this sign going to be lit? No. Okay. I, s I don't know how old the picture this is. Looks like there's lights underneath that sign. But. That's inside. It was laid on the floor. No, no, no. no, on the, no on on the outside outside. of the building, they have light, oh, okay. their yeah, lights there. there. The existing lights that were out there. That face down, basically, yeah. for safety. Yeah. That was to show the placement. Right, okay. Um, so there is borders that are going to be? Right on the on, corners. Okay, so it'll be similar to what's similar to what? what some similar to the, the, the school of hair designs. Design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Similar to the previous sign. We just use that sign. We just use mm -hmm. that particular right. sign. So you've used the same sign and you're just changing what's in the middle. Exactly. Just the, okay, the lettering in the middle. So exactly. instead of the Perfect. Laurel School hair design, then it'll have the your uh, logo and coffee cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, mm -hmm. understand. So just changing. Chairman, so yes, there's no other right. comments. I'd like to make a motion that we approve HDC 049 2015. As presented. I'll second it. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 0492015, made by Mr. Cocoon, seconded by Mr. Dyer. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Councilman Les? Yes. Mr. DiLorenzo? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Looking forward to coming in there. Agenda item five is HDC, whoop, nope, that's what we just did. Agenda item six is HDC 0532015 for 331 Prince George Street. Hello. Hi, good evening, everybody. How are Hello. you? Fine, thank you. I'm here tonight to ask permission to put a sign which uh, Kathleen and I would like to actually put 32 feet of privacy fencing between our backyard and our next door neighbors. Um, let me explain in print context. There's 100 feet of picket fencing that goes along the property line between ours and the late Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Um, I know that because we put it in with <laughs> Mr. Jackson quite a number of years ago. Now, as you may or may not know, she has seized the houses on the market, and we thought it was time to put just, there's just going to be 32 feet of privacy fencing between the end, where the, the back of our house from the end, to where it meets up with the existing privacy fencing that meets up with the alley. The rest will remain the same. The um, picket fence will remain the same. We don't plan to blockade. We right. just want to have a certain amount of privacy for the backyard. Right. Basically, and that's, that's the sole reason. Over the years, we've had a lot of different things. We've had Leland Cypress there. We've had, you know, but everything kind of dies out when we right. start this in, in the interregnum in between their dis, you know, Mrs. Jackson's uh, state selling the home and the new owners. We thought it would be a good time to put up a fence right. without offending anyone. Right. And that was not a yes. point to offend. Understood. It was our point to surprise us. Right. And I think you have it's it's a it's the same fencing that we had in the back to the alley. It's a, it's, okay. It's the exact same style. That's right. why we chose that style. There's no reason other than that to keep consistent. It's nice again. It has the filials on the top of the yes, support. Yes, mm -hmm. and, I, and I noticed, I, I did not know, I noticed that uh, the, the fencing has, the smooth side has to be on their side. And that's fine. That was my question. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> Finish side always points away. Yeah, but then we'll be happy to do that. Uh, and are you going to paint this or keep it with natural? Uh, it's it's pressure treated. Okay. I, I specifically got pressure treated so that I would not have to paint it. Uh, the, the, the one in the back was also, actually it wasn't pressure treated, but it was cypress and it just aged and it's aged well over 20 plus years. There's no reason. I must say the existing fence that's there 
to be quite honest with you, in the next few years would collapse anyway. It's been a, a very long time. What, what was that, the picket fence? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to deal with that whole picket fence issue down the pipe. But right now, I don't need to deal with the privacy, <laughs> but eventually we'll have to replace the rest of that with the fence again. Anybody else? I would simply like to uh, welcome Mr. Delphonse, who is one of the original members, I think, of the Historic Jimmy District Ross Commission. Is chairman. That's right. uh, yes. <laughs> Jimmy Ross, Peggy Anderson, does that ring a Yes, oh, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, so, indeed. Um, Mary Melanie, we were all in the Yes, I served with Mary. In the 1980s. <laughs> wow. And you wow. did good work. Thank, thank, thank you. Good thank good you very work. much. You protect my property as well as everybody else's. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. That being said. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move approval of HDC 053-2015 for 331 Prince George Street as submitted. A second. Mark that first. Madam Chair, I have the motion on the floor to approve HDC 053-2015 made by Mr. Dyer, seconded by Mr. DeLorenzo. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. DeLorenzo? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Councilman Lowe's? Yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. Agenda item seven is HDC 046-2015 for 604 Main Street. Oh, Ms. Harris. I'm good. You're Sharon Harris? Yes. yes. Okay. So you can tell us about your awning? Yes, um, I would like to um, just replace this there um, with the uh, message just in and just put in aromas to go around the country. Um, which is leaving the existing for just a minute. Any questions or comments? I like the way you're doing the corner piece. That looks really neat. Yeah. Well. Madam Chair, <laughs> I move that we uh, approve uh, HDC 046-2015 as presented. And I'll second that. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 046-2015 made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Mr. Cooklin. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Cocoon? Yes. Councilman Lowe's? Yes. Mr. DeLorenzo? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Agenda item eight is HDC 0432015 for 701 Montgomery Street. Is there anyone here? Hello. Do you well, state your name you? for the record and yes, tell us about Willis. your sign? Tell us about your sign. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> Don't be. I'm a performer, but I'm nervous. <laughs> We're just regular folks. We're regular. <laughs> Don't worry. Relax. Um, I would like to put um, a sign in the monumental um, block that's already there at the Laurel Boys and Girls Club mm -hmm. for my performing arts program. It's just a small, um, I don't know if you have a picture, but it's mm -hmm. two and a half wide by four inches high. Just basic with you know my logo and red with the white background. On both monuments, you want to do yes. some both. Yes. Both the corner monuments. Well, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you even have the border going around it, which yeah, looks, looks very nice. Yeah, it does. Looks Thank very nice. You. <laughs> cool. It's the same the same font that's pictured here. Yes, so so the lettering, everything's going to be identical. Okay. Any other 
Anybody? Any other question? Madam Chair, I'll move for approval of uh, HDC 043-2015 as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 043-2015 made by Councilman Less, seconded by Mr. Clickling. Would you call the roll, please? Councilman Les? Yes. Mr. Klukun? Yes. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. DiLorenzo? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 it's okay. And this is the most. <laughs> <laughs> now the next time it'll be easy. Yeah, right. <laughs> good luck. Have a good day. Agenda item nine. Well, we'll move that okay, to last. We'll go to I agenda. sent the reminder in the package. I, I haven't heard from him. Okay. I assumed he would be here. We'll see if he comes in. Um, agenda item 10 is HTC 035-2015 for 639 Main Street. Hello. My name is James Wilson. I represent uh, Uptown Bay. I'd like to uh, put a window sign, two window signs actually. Um, size is about four by two, uh, red, yellow, black, and white. Uh, slightly tended to keep the heat out of the front of the office, or the front of the building, um, on Main Street from the sun coming in the evening time, in the afternoon. It it's does come in. There. So I think you have a picture of this transparent from the inside. Uh, inside the building looking out, you have plenty of visibility. Inside, if you're outside looking in, you can still see through the actual logo uh, of the business itself. It's not blacked out or not tinted out or anything like that. It's totally secret. Um, just free of apology. That's what I would like to do. Okay. And that is your logo. We had. And I apologize, oh, I have the wrong glasses. I can't see everyone clearly. So I don't worry, worry. I mean, I don't, don't worry. You, so. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <clears throat> don't worry. And we have his business card here somewhere. That uh, it's down here. Yeah. Yes. Did they see it? It's down that end. I, I see it. See the, business hmm? the business card. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's a representation of the color combinations mm -hmm. on the business card. My only question would be to staff would be, uh, does the size of the signs, the two signs, meet um, the requirement for maximum coverage of the window? With those two signs and the distance sign, he would still be just at the limit. He wouldn't be able to put any new signs up okay. after these two. Okay. okay. So he's good as far as zoning compliance. Okay. Do you have no other further plans of any other signage? No, I had one for the back, but if it's going to limit that, then I'm okay with it because uh, the, the ones I have up front will have to be sufficient if it's too many. Okay. I think it does draw your eye. It draws your eye more to your business well, where you're I, just seeing I actually hope so because mm -hmm. we went to the uh, Main Street Festival, had a little booth there, um, handed out a couple items, and it's kind of disturbing in ways. The most question is, where are you at? We can't find you on Main Street. Mm. Why? You know, you tell me it's popping out. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe one of the things is they had the crab cake truck in front of my business. Right. That's the side of the front. But that's the other thing they told me, and I'm trying to find a different way to try to get it more visible as you drive up Main Street so right. everything looks the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the way it has to be, but I'm trying to figure out some type of way to, to help out a little bit because we can always use more business. Right. Of course. I think on the day of the festival is not a good day to represent where people can find you yeah, because they're I know. so... That was the most asked question that day. Right. Mm -hmm. I was kind of wondering, you know, well, why? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, well, we've been here five or six months now and right. so I'm getting the same... So I'm going to have to try to do some different type of things and try to draw some more people. Make sure people know it's Patuxent Place because they may yes, be looking that, for something. I have a question on the, on the measurements design on the application on the front. We have uh, four, in, on the front we have it that it's listed as the signs are four feet by two feet. 
and then your lettering uh, that you handwritten on the application says 10 inches tall and 36 uh, inches long. So, I'm a, I, didn't, I, didn't, I can't hear anything you're saying. But it says the sign is 4 by 2 feet. All right, is that including the tint? That it's that's a good question. I, I would say so. Or, or is, is four feet four, by two feet, feet the actual whole, graphic? Four feet is the whole thing, the whole entire graphic. Oh. The outside lines, not the lettering. The lettering right. is, is small. Mm -hmm. The actual sign that you're seeing is four feet by two feet. Two okay. feet high, four feet wide. Okay, and that's the graphic portion of it, not that's every, that's every, that's every, not, yeah, that's So the entire graphic. so the window all is of, all the color four feet wide. All the color that you see is four Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to figure if that's including your tint portion or if it is just the, tent the graphic. Is, is the window only four feet wide or is the window, the window is larger than four feet? The tent portion was put in there to lock the sun also. Well, I just left it there to get it. I hope I'm understanding this question. Um, what is the, the, the total width of the window is how much? It is, you know, I want to say... I'm not 100% sure. I think it was 65 inches. Okay, that that'll gives me my answer. Thank you. Sure the only reason he's asking is because your handwritten copy said it was 10 inches tall by 37 inches long, and then the typed up copy well, said four feet so by two I feet. But, so but, he just wanted he, to make sure. Yeah, but was that just talking about the lettering? Right. As opposed, yeah, as opposed to the actual in graphics and then the whole sign right. included. Right. Okay. So we're clear now, right, Mark? <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> Thank you. Anybody? Madam Chair, I'd like to move that we approve uh, HDC 035-2015 as presented. I would second that. Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to approve HDC 035-2015, made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Mr. DeLorenzo. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. DeLorenzo? Yes. Councilman Les? Yes. Mr. Klepkoon? Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Chairwoman Blitz? Yes. And the motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Hope, hope it does well. So I hope it works. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, I'm willing to talk about this even though Bob is not here. I'd I'm like very, to discuss I'm it. I'm very, very familiar with what he wants to do here. Okay. And, and if I could just uh, take, if you'll indulge me for a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> this falls in the, uh, within the scope of one of the defined areas for the uh, Community Redevelopment Authority. Uh, lower end of Main Street and it's the second area is where we swing around onto Route 1. Uh, and as you know, the, the Community Redevelopment Authority has so far bought the theater. I'm no longer on it. Uh, Donna Crary is the chair. Uh, Tim Abel, uh, Mr. Frederick. It's two other members. Okay. Um, and their goal is to reinvigorate the lower end of Main Street as the upper end of Main Street was done with cuts in place 20 some years ago. Um, the, um, as we all know, Bob Mignon moved his printing plant operation to this location. In fact, on the left hand side, if you go into that space, he's got, a, he's got some office that he uses. But primarily, when you go to the back, it's all printing equipment and collating equipment and envelope stuffing equipment and all that. <coughs> everything, everything that was in Beltsville has been moved mm -hmm. here. They've got some high-end equipment there. Um, I'm familiar with what he wants to do here. And in fact, we already have a, a variation of this approach with the uh, Braid Place up on uh, Main Street on the right-hand side across from... Uh, across from... Uh, a liquor store? Mm -hmm. Is that yep. the right place? Yep. Okay. Uh, and Brashear's again, old building. Huh? Brashear's old building. Yeah, that's right. And the idea was that, in fact, at night you can actually, when the light's on the, in, in the back, you can actually see something that's going on in back there. Um, uh, and so, again, I think this is an appropriate place for this type 
of presentation. I mean, we've got the uh, we've got the uh, fire department. We've got the the Laurel train station. We've got Ellis's, St. Mary's, and the trolley. I think that's what he's going to do, if I remember correctly, when he when he grabbed me and trying to tell me, and I really wasn't listening. Um, I, I would only suggest that, in fact, if the community, community Redevelopment Authority is successful in acquiring some additional properties and we see some redevelopment down there, what we might want to do is approve this with a three-year recall. It's not in the guidelines right now. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Approve it with a three-year recall and see what's happening down there in three years. Maybe it's time to pull this. And in fact, he might want to pull it and do something else. Mm -hmm. But that's just my thought on this. Uh, but again, it all involves the Community Redevelopment Authority. This is the Arts District. Um, there's some additional properties going to be bought by the CRA, I'm sure. Um, they're sort of, they keep it to themselves like commercial real estate people until they've actually done the deal. So they own two now. They own the theater and they own uh, the Quill property. And in fact, I believe they're going to probably uh, propose something for the Quill property here pretty soon. For the vacant lot property? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things was talked about was parking on the back where it backs up to Fetty Alley and maybe a gazebo in the middle of the property. Uh, you don't want to take it away from Main Street Festival. You don't want to take it away from the farmer's market, but you want to enhance the property. Um, as Mr. Fleming could tell us, uh, I haven't been in the theater because it's a, it's a, a bad place to go, and I don't think our insurance company wants me walking in the building. It's but again, train, it's a train wreck. Huh? It's a train wreck. Thank you. The, the torpedoes are not running hot, straight, and normal down there, are they? But again, we've got, I mean, the building's got to come down. Uh, I took a lot of heat when I said that when we bought the building from my neighbors, family. But in order to renovate a theater like that, you're going to spend 10 or more million dollars. And what do you have? You've got no parking. You've got a theater that was designed and built for a town where most people walked to the movies at one time, or they dropped people off. So again, but I think this is the appropriate, this is a very good approach to a lot of window space in this building. So that somebody's not just looking into his plant at this time. Mm -hmm. They're actually looking at some historical scenes. Mike, is your understanding this would be like static or rotating? I, well, I was not, thinking this would be kind of rotating. Well, I, I think originally he wants to put this up and see how it goes. But again, he could change it. I mean, you don't forget, they've got, I don't know where he found the picture of Ellis's, because it's not from the museum. Actually, the baby in the lady's arms in that picture came into his shop. She, she furnished the picture? I don't know if she brought the, she must have brought the picture. Why else would she come well, in and say, the, I'm the baby in this woman's oh, arms? Wow. Wow. Oh, well, um, but again, I don't know where he got the picture of Ellis's because when I spoke to Jim tonight, that did not come from the museum. But don't forget, the museum has a wealth of pictures because they've got all of Sadler's pictures yeah. that have been accessioned to the museum. And that could be an opportunity, but I mean, these are appropriate pictures for right now. Are these, the, the, only, the only thing that I didn't like about it is that the, the different color yes. schemes. It's because of the type of pictures they are. Mm -hmm. So That's, it would be different colors well, I mean, like that. Well, I mean, don't forget the one with the, um, the one with the fire station and the one with the trolley, are probably around the turn of the century. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know whether they're tin types or what they are. Right. Yeah, they probably are. Okay. My only uh, concern with this uh, is that it's presented as art, and, which, which is fine, but I think more appropriate would be as photographs. Because art could really mean anything. It could mean a whole variety of different things that could be presented there. And I think I'm that not terribly sure. The well, they're, histori they're, histor they're historical. historical photographs is what they are. If they and, and maybe that's they how be we stated as such. And maybe that's how we prove it. But again, I think part of this is a recall at some point in time to reassess: Is it having the desired effect? Is the CRA moving ahead with redevelopment of the property? But again, I, Bob just grabbed me for a few minutes and. 
and he wanted to tell me everything. And I did, uh, honestly, I didn't have time to with him. And he doesn't feel like this would detract from the fact that it's a printing business. Well, um, don't forget, he, he went ahead and replaced the whole awning across the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and again, the entrance is to the right. Mm -hmm. That's where the reception people are. There's two people usually sitting in there. <laughs> and that, that was another thing I was thinking just. There is a door on the left hand side. Right. Okay, but they're gonna that will not be used. It'll be mm -hmm. just the uh, And it hasn't been used. picture. Yeah, yeah, right. But to me there's just such a contrast. If he I would like if he could make this a little <laughs> less green and orange and make it more Well let, 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 let's start with the photo let's start with the pictures on the other well, one. This thing could be well, I, actually, I actually kind of like that it's separate because it tells yeah, you that it's yeah. it's the entrance. It makes you it makes you realize that that's the business there. entrance. Yeah. Well, he doesn't own the building, does he? No, he does not own the building. I mean, that's part of the problem. He does not own the building. I know, because if he owned it, this would all be fixed. I mean, he would fix the whole upstairs. I, uh, I mean, I, I mean, it's a vast improvement with the awning, and I think that this represents not only an improvement to the, his facade, but more importantly. It augments what's going on with the CRA and what we're trying to do down there in the city. Because basically, with the glass front, there's really nothing historic about that. It's the whole building. I know. You know. No, but it's not about the building. It's more about no, the building. I realize, building. I realize yeah. that. So, yeah. this brings it into perspective of well, what Main used, Street was. Mm -hmm. I, I think this used to be the Western yeah. Auto. It was. I think yeah. when a Vokes, it was solid, Mr. Vokes it was family had it. Problem. 40 years ago, 45 years ago. I know, ago. it was Western Auto. Oh, you weren't even born yet. I used to go in there as a kid when it was Western Auto. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> so anyways, I, that's my thought about that's this. Strange. I, this isn't, I don't even think this should have been broken. I'd be, I'd be, let me just say this. I'm willing to make a motion to approve with a three-year recall. Just did it, it would be now, could it be stated that approval to like display historical pictures or or yeah, the I'm historical gonna, yeah. pictures that are yeah, presented with a three with a thirty six month not recall art. option. If he wants to change it from historical pictures, then I think he should come back to the right. Well, that's what I would say. In the in the approval would be that these particular pictures are the ones that were well. Yeah, again, I'm sure it's not artwork. That's true. It's not really artwork. It's not historical artwork. photographs. I that's what I'm saying. To be. display historical pictures or photographs. Yeah. To yeah. display historical so photographs. Yeah. 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 As presented you know, here, so that we yeah, know. Yeah, he, that may he might change those because, like I say, he's got access to all Sadler's photographs up at the museum. I, when I spoke to Jim tonight, I made sure that those had been, a, that they've gone through the accession they've been given to the museum. Yeah. Now, th this is going to be on the uh, installed on the window, like tinting, right? It's not, they're not panels. No, no, it, it's, 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 I understand. It's, it's such like mylar. A, it's like a mylar film that's perforated, you know, so you can look through it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you see outside. But they can't see in. They can't see out in. They but can't see from the outside. Stuff like in. The it's going to be in the, like yeah, like the buses. Right. Yeah. But it's going to be installed right on the glass. It's my understanding that's how it's done. Right. Okay. On the outside you know, of the, the glass. City part is a problem. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I thought that was an issue. The chief has already said that with that much coverage on the glass, if there's a trouble call there, their officers are going to be reluctant to go in the door because they can't see what's going on. Well, I think that has I'll, been an issue. I'll be sympathetic other, to that, but right side. now the blinds are pulled. They can't see in any way. Open the blinds. It, is there any way we can go ahead and talk right. on this so that <laughs> yeah. Bob can come and talk yeah. about it? And we you know, can clarify this. So we can clarify this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Get Bob to come. But it's not so much this, this particular installation. If this goes, how many other people on Main Street are right. Well, again, I think it's a unique property down in that. First of all, it's in that zone, Marty. That's my, that's my perspective. Okay. Yeah. And this part That's of it, argument. I think we need to, to clarify that anyway. with Rich. Basically, the public is in here, in the area that they're not putting it in. This mm -hmm. is basically warehouse or whatever he's got back there. But, yeah. Because right but now still, all you see is call, all you see is the mini blinds, know. and uh, yeah. I mean I'm not opposed to it in this in this instant with with this. I think it helps break up all that glass and and the pictures are interesting hopefully we don't have any rear end collisions with people <laughs> looking at the pictures well maybe people slowing down on main street might be a good idea 
<laughs> might make them slow down. That would be nice. So I think I think I think Bob's on your table. If we ask Bob yes. to come next meeting. Okay. And let Sonny talk to him about what we'll talk to here today. Okay. So maybe make how some opposed I guess with the police is department. The chief. I guess he is opposed to it. I understand that. I mean. Morning, has he expressed that to Mr. McGill? Oh, it'd be the same if it was just a wall. If it was on a wall, we wouldn't be able to see any of it going in this door and you don't know what could be going on from here. Marty, maybe that's a discussion that ought to take place between the chief and Bob before it comes back to us next meeting. I mean, the, the chief is not, not opposed to something like this, but he thinks that there are things that can be done to enhance his officer's ability to see it. Mm -hmm. Like maybe make them not cover the whole window, have um, like a clear border around each one. Because I know at the salon that you're talking about, they just have like one and then they have a blank pane of glass and then they have another picture like that where you can see inside. And you can see through them right. at nighttime at night. when they have the lights on. Mm -hmm. Well, I think these will be the same way at night. If you've got lights on inside, you'll be able to see from outside in. Mm -hmm. Just like the buses, if you watch the buses that are wrapped, mm -hmm. at night you can see inside That's of them correct. if there's lights on in the bus. You know, or he may elect to have a little bit of, like, one of these panes of glass clear in between each picture or mm -hmm. something so that Rich could see. But I do think we need to table this soon. Okay. So we have to do a motion for that? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, table this. Uh, uh, HDC 051-2015 um, until next meeting when we can get the presenter here. Another second. And I'll second that with a amendment that um, maybe we get some input from chief of police or safety official if there's any concerns as far as having that much window uh, covered up. And maybe we could ask a representative yeah. to come in and state their concerns. And maybe a solution at that That's meeting too. Second. Okay. Uh, Madam Secretary, I have a motion on the floor to table HDC 0512015 into our next meeting. Uh, motion made by Mr. Hayes, seconded by Mr. Proclean, with the provision that we consult with someone from the police department. So the Prior. Table. table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Hayes, Mr. Clickman. At the next meeting, you have to make a motion to remove the table. Okay. Okay. So you can try to do it. It's okay. We can do that. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Clickman? Yes. Councilman Rice? Yes. Mr. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm Mr. Dino sorry, Rizzo? Sonny. Yes. Mr. Dyer? Yes. Mr. It's Sonny, so she didn't have to yes. put it off. Yes. Thank you. Oh, we're moving on to staff approvals. Are there any questions about that? How many trees did you take in? Four. <laughs> One because it was too big, and then the uh, it had uh, a black beetles in two of them, oh. and some kind of powder beetle in the other Ooh, one. Oh, great. Huh? That's ash beetles, ash powder beetles. Yeah, that's bad. Well, he had to throw it in a different truck. Mm -hmm. right. You couldn't put they it in the same truck. Right. That's it right. Differently. Well, the one tree die, it was dying because it topped the ballpark gas electric, electric typed it. Yeah. Uh, topped it. The, the uh, Japanese maple out front was 100 years old, and it just reached its limit. But the one that really bothered me was the cherry tree in the corner. That's, and that's the one that had the uh, powder beetles. We didn't even know it until he tried to trim He was going to trim right. it. So we're going to plant a couple. Of the, a couple of trees are going to be planted pretty quick because we're going to put a new fence in. Great. That is great. It'll be slow-growing evergreens. <laughs> <laughs> Not dwarfs. 
because uh, Bobby McSeen's got one in her yard that my wife likes. They're going to try and figure out what it is. If anybody could figure it out, it would be Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, any other questions about the staff approvals? No? Uh, any new business? Nobody? Don't have uh, anything special to tell me? No. Nope. You were talking about the uh, revitalization? Yeah, CRA. What is the it's Community time, Redevelopment Authority. timetable on the 100 block, the old Laurel building supply lot? Lot. Well, well, I mean, all I can tell you is that uh, all I can tell you is it's still under consideration. Um, who was that? Patriot, Marty? Patriot for uh, Mark Central? It's not dead. It's sort of in a holding pattern. Is that the right way to put it? For the last eight years. Right. <laughs> well, no, don't forget, it's been a couple of developers have been in and out. Right. And then they had to, then Howard County wanted the, the money. Um, so I think we just need to wait and see. <clears throat> I, let me just say this. If they move um, Preakness to Laurel, yeah. I think that will kill that idea up there. Because all that property was going to be developed as uh, uh, MXT, I believe. They were going to put an MXT zone. And they were looking for the, uh, for the train stop. I mean, the platform's still there for the whistle stop. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they used to stop there, but they haven't stopped there for years and years and years. So I think we just need to wait and see. And it depends what the governor is going to do. And it's not all, you know, money's got to come from somewhere. And there's a, a cost to the state when they do that, in addition to Patriot. So we'll see. The news this evening says that they're going to have to, to amend Maryland law, because apparently there's a law that says it can't be moved to another track unless a what I was told. I heard that too, Marty. And it makes it more difficult because the station's on the historic register. I mean, there's a lot of issues going right. on here. But again, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Curious. I mean, you know, we're going to move Laurel Fuel Oil and. <laughs> Okay, brand, new, brand new building, brand new facility. <laughs> well, I, I figure when State Highway, you know, abandons that property, and they will eventually. That's where you're going to move your operation up the road. That that'll work. He has it all planned out. Okay. You, you make you make a critical area of people's people real happy. <laughs> Somebody will get some nice waterfront property. Well, how many times have you extended the coffer dam twice? Built it up higher twice. It started out pretty low, the containment. Oh, no, no, no. no. It's been like that since I was young. I uh, think before that, though, it wasn't that tall. Early 70s. And I think before, Probably right after the flood. Used to be lower. 72. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of things happening. Um, we're just about done with the pumping station down at the entrance road to the the Laurel Raceway. Everybody knows what that is. Mm -hmm. That pumps the, the water from the Western Branch plant to uh, Fort Meade and pumps the 15% that's left back. It connects with the one down at the um, uh, Fort Meade filtration plant. Uh, I think they're both pretty close to being in operation now. Um, uh, there's only one other place in the state where they're doing that. So it's a good use. It's a good use of water coming out of the western branch, western branch plant. So, okay. Thank you. You had something to tell us, and you didn't even know it. We had to pull it out of you. That's a Mr. Clacoon. <laughs> I haven't been down to his place for a while. He would have asked me. Okay. If there isn't anything new else. Can we have a motion, motion? to adjourn? Thank you.